therefore to blame them. Um, so remember that the slave morality defines good as simply the opposite of its primary concept, evil. Um, so the good, continuing, uh, top of page 26, is when out of the vengeful cunning of powerlessness, the oppressed, downtrodden, violated, say to themselves, let's be different from the evil ones. Namely, let's be good. And good is what everyone is who does not do violence, who injures no one, who doesn't attack, who doesn't retaliate, who leaves vengeance to God, who keeps himself concealed as we do, who avoids all evil and in general demands very little of life like us, the patient, the humble, and the righteous. Um, okay, so here really is uh, the problem further down uh, on 26, um, and that is this. This harsh, uh, but, but this harsh matter of fact, there's a hard fact here, this prudence of the lowest order, which even insects have, has, thanks to the, that counterfeiting and self-deception of powerlessness, clothed itself in the pomp of renounced quiet, Patiently waiting for her, wait, sorry, patiently waiting for her, as if the very weakness of the weak, that is to say, his essence, his effect, his whole unique, unavoidable, and detachable reality, were a voluntary achievement. Something willed, something chosen, a deed of merit. This kind of human, uh, this kind of human needs the belief in some, in, sorry, this kind of human needs the belief in a neutral, quote, subject, soul or will, with free choice, out of an instinct of self-preservation, self-affirmation, in which every lie tends to hallow itself. It's perhaps for this reason that the subject, or to speak more popularly, the soul, has until now been the best article of faith on earth. Because it made possible for the majority of moral, mortals, namely the weak and oppressed of every kind, that sublime self-deception of interpreting weakness itself as freedom, of, un, of interpreting their being such and such as a merit. Okay, so the soul, or the pure will, off in some other non-empirical world, which freely chooses its own principles without any kind of constraint, serves exactly this purpose as a chooser who's responsible for one's character and is therefore blamable, is therefore someone who is to blame for being strong, to blame for being powerful. Um, in the Twilight of the Idols, in one of his last books, he describes the metaphysics of free will, the idea of a radically unconstrained chooser as the metaphysics of the hangman. This is the metaphysical picture that's needed in order to be able to blame. Okay, so um, section 14 then gives this wonderful dialogue. Right, so expression of resentment, take revenge on the powerful. By blaming them. So section 14 then um, is this idea of how ideals are fabricated, moral ideals are fabricated. So there's this wonderful dialogue between that each imagined between himself and his reader, that is you as the reader's eyes and ears are um, uh, opened to, he says, um, the very bottom um, of page 27, um, the secret of how they fabricate ideals on earth. Um, so that was uh, just about the line 25, the middle of page 27. Then at the very bottom, um, we get sort of the high point where um, 
imagines his reader responding and saying, now for the first time, sorry, uh, now for the first time I hear what they have said so often. They, the proponents of morality, the moral system of values, in affirming uh, their values. So now that our eyes and ears are open, we can hear and see more clearly what it is that's at the heart of the moral system of values. Now for the first time I hear what they have said so often. Quote, so here's what the proponents of morality say. We good ones, we are the just, what they demand, they call not retaliation, but rather the, quote, the triumph of justice. What they hate is not their enemy, no. They hate, quote, injustice, ungodliness. What they believe and hope for is not the hope of revenge, the drunkenness of sweet revenge, already Homer called it sweeter than honey. Rather, what they hope for, of the moral system of values is not revenge, uh, but rather the victory of God, of the just God over the ungodly. What's left on earth for them to love are not their brothers in hate, but their, quote, brothers in love, as they say. All the good and just on earth. Okay, so this is a great passage, um, and I want you to note the reference to justice here. Um, and in particular, notice that when he's talking about justice here, it's in quotes. That is, this is talking about justice as morality understands it. So justice as morality understands it uh, is really Nietzsche thinks vengeance is really getting even, settling the score um, with the powerful, with those who are evil. Um, and I emphasize this, and, and, and sorry, and Nietzsche thinks that they um, either hypocritically or under self-deception genuinely believe that they're not interested in vengeance. Uh, that they're going to leave it to God to punish the evil ones. Um, but Nietzsche thinks that we can see what's really going on here. And what I want to emphasize um, is that this moralized interpretation of justice really is about vengeance, really is a, a form of getting even. Um, and I'm emphasizing this because later on in, in uh, the second essay, we're going to see a different understanding of justice, a non, or not yet, moralized understanding of justice, which is one of uh, a kind of fairness. And Nietzsche has pretty high praise for justice understood in this non-moralized sense of fairness. So I just want to flag that for you, that although he's mocking and critical of justice understood in this moralized sense, he's going to, he puts in quotes, and he's going to talk about another sense uh, later on. Okay, so he concludes this, se the, this section um, um, by still continuing with this dialogue, um, saying that um, you can hear the defenders of moral values, that is, pious religious Christians, you can hear them say that, um, that they're going to continue on until the last judgment. They will live in, he says, faith, in love, in hope. That's the end of section 14. Section 15 then starts up with that same phrase and asks, in faith in what? In love of what? In hope of what? These weak ones, someday they too want to be the strong ones. There is no doubt. Someday their kingdom too shall come. A 
among them, it's called the kingdom of God, pure and simple, as was noted. They are, of course, so humble in all things. When they triumph, it will be God's triumph. Even to experience that, that is the achievement of their kingdom. Even to experience that, they need to live long. They need to live beyond death. They, indeed, they need eternal life so that the kingdom of God, they can also recover eternally, sorry, so that in the kingdom of God, what they call that, they can also recover eternally the losses incurred during the earth life in faith, in love, in hope. Recover their losses for what? Recover their losses through what? Um, then he says, it was a gross blunder on Dante's part, it seems to me, Dante's inferno, uh, when, with terror-inspiring ingeniousness, he placed above the gate to his hell the inscription, I too was created by eternal love. In any case, over the gate of the Christian paradise and its, quote, eternal blessedness, there could be no better justification for allowing the inscription to stand, I too was created by eternal hate. Assuming that truth may stand above the gate to a lot, there is no such place. For what is the blessedness of that paradise? Um, so the weak ones, someday they're going to be the strong ones, that their heaven is going to be a place where their suffering has been redeemed, and the ones that they call evil will, um, well, the ones that they call evil um, will be those that they, the weak, take their vengeance on, or God will take their vengeance on. Okay, so, um, very bottom of 28 all the way through 29, um, Nietzsche says you can't do any better than to quote from Aquinas on what heaven will be like. And what heaven will be like, the kingdom of God, that is the place where genuine values of morality will be redeemed. Um, the blessed, that is the weak, the ones who are pious and self-denying here on earth, will watch the torture of those who have been condemned, those who are damned, uh, as Aquinas puts it, in order that their bliss be more delightful to them. And Tertullian, who was an early church father, explains in his writings in exquisite detail all the kinds of tortures that, in this case, the Jews, but in general, those who are impious will be subjected to. Okay, so, um, so at its core, the moral system of values is giving comfort to the weak. And it does this by allowing them, in their minds, to take vengeance on the powerful. It imagines that the powerful have free wills in which they chose freely to do the things that they've done. They could have done differently. They've chosen these things uh, and are the ones who are, uh, because they're strong, because they're physical, because they live in the empirical world and are able to, are able to create in their image, um, they are evil. And we, weak ones, um, react against that. Of course, we can't take vengeance against them because we're what? We're weak. Um, but we can in our minds. And we affirm values, therefore, that um, give life to that kind of presentment. Um, so, what really counts is not strength or weakness, it's not getting your way, it's not creating things of value here on, on Earth. Here on Earth, we should be ascetic, we should deny ourselves. It's a virtue to... Um